What is going on, y'all? Robert Sykes, KetoSavage.com, coming at you another AMA Ask Me Anything episode. This one is all about the rate at which you want to decrease calories in a cut. But before we dive into that, let's roll the intro. All right, so this question is brought to us by Donald, and he asks, I have been in a surplus for some time, and I am planning my next cut. I am wondering, is it better to descend slowly, cutting calories by 133 calories for 12 weeks until I hit bottom uh, calories willing to do, which is around 1,600, or is it better to cut more dramatically around 533 calories per four-week period? Currently, I'm at 3,200 calories a day, 78% of which are from fat, and usually around 12 to 16 grams total carbs per day. I'm looking at just a 12-week cut um, from 3-1-23 to 5-17-23. This would be my first well-thought-out cut. Normally, what I would have done is 3,200 calories today and 1,600 tomorrow. Doing that, I always felt like crap, trying to set this one up for success. All right. Great question, Donald. Uh... If you've always felt like crap going that ultra fast aggressive cut route in the past, then don't do that again. Um, there's a couple of different trains of thought with this. Some people are of the opinion that it's better to just, you know, rip the bandaid off and drop your calories drastically. Um, it's not sustainable, but you can be really aggressive with it, and you'll see some, you'll see more initial weight loss, more initial fat loss, and you know, just do that, and then return to some degree of normalcy after that aggressive cut period. I don't like that. I'm definitely a fan of ripping the Band-Aid off with many things in life, like when it comes to starting a business, doing a cold plunge, and all that kind of stuff. But when it comes to body recomposition, I don't recommend crazy swings from a caloric standpoint because that's not really going to bode well uh, metabolically speaking. It's not really going to bode well hormonally speaking. It's not really going to be sustainable. And when it comes to nutrition and body composition, sustainability is absolutely paramount. That's very much so the key. Um, and you can do things that are uncomfortable as you swing through surpluses and deficits, but you don't want to do things that shock your body to a point of not really being optimal. And if you go from 3,200 calories to 1,600 calories overnight, you will most certainly lose some body fat. You'll most certainly lose more weight you know, sooner than had you done it very gradually. But you're going to hit a plateau, and then when you do hit that plateau, where do you go from there? You can't really go any further. And you're also going to risk seeing a pretty significant drop in performance. If you go from 3,200 calories where your body is well-fueled to 1,600 calories overnight, your body's going to be like, what the heck did you just do to us? We were, we were feeling fueled and, and performing well, and now we're not. We're not going to be recovering as well. We're not going to be able to train as hard. And if you're not training as hard, if you're not lifting as heavy, in the context of a deficit, you will lose more lean tissue than would be necessary. So I don't like doing that. Rather, I like going very gradual with my caloric manipulations so that my body is able to acclimate to those changes. It doesn't really you know, cause a downward trend towards my performance. Um, it's more sustainable from a hunger and satiety standpoint because it's much easier for me to take away one egg a day than it is for me to take away one whole meal a day or two meals a day. So I'm definitely on the side of sustainability and slow and gradual when it comes to caloric manipulations. And then also, too, if you do so very gradually, it's not to say that you're not going to plateau with that method as well, but if you do so very gradually and you are consistent with it, your body is going to build up momentum, and that momentum is going to be more likely to carry you through those plateaus and minimize those plateaus. Whereas if you go from 3,200 to 1,600 overnight, like I said, you're going to see a faster weight drop initially, but then your body's going to be like, I ain't doing this, I got no momentum, you... You put me in this mode, and I just like had to go all out, and now there's nothing left in the tank. If you go gradual, there's going to be a little bit left in the tank, and you can keep that momentum pushing you forward. And um, amongst all, the most important thing is that you are going to still perform and feel better. Your hormones are going to be better. Your metabolism is going to be better. You're not going to be sacrificing an unnecessary drop in calories. Like maybe your body would have dropped fine at 2,300 
but you wouldn't know that because you went all the way to 1600 calories. So you have that massive, you know, caloric range that you've, you know, thrown away that you didn't necessarily have to. So I am very much so a fan of going very gradual and doing like a minimum viable dose approach. Now that oftentimes takes longer. So budget yourself more time, you know, like I totally get wanting the results fast, but when it comes to fitness and nutrition and health and wellness, like nothing comes fast. Like it just, nothing comes fast. You can do things fast and you can see results fast, but those results are not lasting. It's much more impressive in my mind to reach that desired composition that you're shooting for, but then do so in a healthy way that you don't have to then rebound out of negatively and put on a bunch of body fat after the cuts over because your body was asked to do something that it never really should have in the first place. So there's my take on that, Donald. I appreciate the question. Great question. You requested some toasted almond coconut keto bricks. So I've got some of those coming your way. For those of you that do not know, if you submit me a well thought out question via the Google form in the description below, then I will send you some keto bricks with a flavor of your choosing. Thank you very much, Donald. Thank you all for tuning in. Talk to you next time.